This is It's Not What You Know. Hello, I'm Miles Jupp. It's often said that it's not what you know, it's who you know. This is why no one will mind you gaining access to the driver's compartment and seizing control of a train as long as you've got a mate who works for Hornby. <laughs> Or why it's perfectly acceptable to say, I may struggle to comprehend the laws of the British highway, but I may yet be visited in prison by my former boss, Nick Clegg. <laughs> On this show, we don't have the slightest interest in what you know, just who you know, and equally importantly, which is to say not very, how well you know them. Each of our three guests has nominated someone they know well to answer a series of questions. Could be a friend, could be a family member, could simply be someone you've been plucking up the courage to proposition and figure this could be as good an opportunity as any. <laughs> If my guests correctly predict the answers their nominees will give, they will score points. And what do points mean? Prizes. Well, according to my dictionary, points is a technical term from the world, <laughs> from the world of ballet, uh, describing the moment when a dancer supports the entirety of their body weight just on the tips of their fully extended feet. Pick up more of those fully extended feet than anyone else, panellists, and you could yet be the miffed recipient of tonight's star prize a set of Russian dolls depicting the faces of all former presenters of the BBC's flagship consumer affairs programme, Watchdog, uh, <laughs> arranged in order of ascending niceness. Uh, to... <laughs> You'll have hours of fun fitting Nicky Campbell snugly inside Anne Robinson. <laughs> Please welcome tonight's panel, Dougie Anderson, Izzy Sati and Nick Helm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dougie Anderson, actor, musician, man about town, teenage heartthrob, these are all types of people that Dougie Anderson has previously met. <laughs> He's a presenter, a broadcaster, a pundit, a veteran of more than 50 episodes of the noble court of banter that is BBC Radio 5 Live's Fighting Talk, and he is currently, although who knows for how much longer this will be the case, wearing trousers. Um, <laughs> Dougie, how did you go about choosing someone to answer our questions? I panicked at the beginning process because I thought, should one go for a family member? And I thought, oh, no, I'll just go for someone who will do it. And so, <laughs> I, so I chose someone, a male, a married male to a woman. Uh, he's got a daughter of three. And he's from Woking, which is the same place that Paul Weller's from. But at the time of going to air, I don't believe the two have ever met. <laughs> uh, well, let's see who you picked. My name's Nigel Thompson. I'm originally from Woking in Surrey. I've known Dougie for a while, and he was also best man at my wedding. Very much from Woking in Surrey. It's your friend Nigel Thompson. <laughs> Next, we welcome Izzy Sati, actress, comedian, singer, guitarist, star of Radio 4's Izzy Sati's Love Letters. She's perhaps best known as one of the legions of exhausted actresses to have shown David Mitchell affection in return for money. <laughs> <laughs> Playing as she does, the sultry seductress of the stationery cupboard, Dobby, in Channel 4's Peep Show. Izzy, what qualities were you looking for in your nominee? Um, I was looking for someone who knew me very well. This person is a keen campanologist, um, which means bell ringer. And um, I once tested our relationship by downing a bottle of tequila at the age of 14 and running my hand along the mantelpiece, smashing all of her belongings to the floor. <laughs> I really hope this is a relative. Um, <laughs> let's see who it is. My name's Viv Sati. I'm a bell ringer, stroke bridge player. I live in Derbyshire, and I'm also the mother of Izzy Sati. Yes, it's Izzy's mother, Viv Sati. <laughs> what can I tell you about Nick Helm that wouldn't sound like someone merely reading a list of problems and or worrying <laughs> symptoms? <laughs> <laughs> this man sings, this man plays the guitar, this man writes poetry, and thankfully this man has developed a habit of paying bills promptly following a series of unchallenged CCJs. <laughs> Nick, tell us how you picked your nominee tonight. My first two people refused. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, I thought uh, my nominee would refuse, uh, but she didn't, so that is why <laughs> I picked her. Um, but also, yeah, she probably... Knows me really well. Yeah, she's one of my four best friends. Because <laughs> I, I rank them. Well, it sounds like a rigorous uh, selection process. Um, let's see who it is. Hello, uh, 
Um, I'm Jean and I live in St Albans. I used to work in further education colleges and I just happened to be Nick's mum. Please welcome Nick's mother, Jean Helm. Well, it's just about time to start the show. (laughs) In this round, we ask your nominees some questions to find out what they know about you. All you have to do is correctly guess how they answered those questions. Dougie Anderson, we'd like you to go first. Okay. Dougie, your interviews with various celebrities on TV and radio have made you, let's not mince words, all but famous. (laughs) What happened when we asked your friend Nigel, who is Dougie's favourite interviewee? What do you think he said? (sighs) I've spoken to many. Many people, uh, musicians, actors, basically musicians and actors, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I remember interviewing uh, Rennie Zellweger in London. It was during the BAFTAs. It was an exciting time if you were nominated for one. And <laughs> I was on a junket, you know, interviewing various film stars. wasn't meant to be interviewing Rennie Zellweger. She saw me in the corridor and uh, specifically asked me to interview her. So I did. I thought she was an absolute darling. She'd later go on to win an Oscar. (laughs) Coincidence or not, you decide. (laughs) Uh, So uh, I would have to go for Rennie Zellweger, I think, yeah. Well, uh, let's find out. Nigel? I think it was Rennie Zellweger, actually. Very good. He knows you so well, Dougie. Uh, René Zellweger, of course, starred in Bridget Jones's Diary, which has great literary diaries go, made up for in jokes about pants, what it lacks in eyewitness accounts of the Great Fire of London. <laughs> Two points. Hell of a start, if I may say. Izzy, your turn now. Uh, we asked your mother, Viv, who is Izzy's favourite novelist? What do you think she'll go for? Well, when we were very young, we used to read books that my mum had written for us which were (laughs) always stories from the Bible, but with our names substituted. (laughs) So she used to sort of add little things like, and then they went to Matlock Green. And and there was always a moral, you know, like don't commit adultery and stuff. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) I think she knows that I didn't like those stories. Um, I think she probably said Iris Murdoch because she knows that I like... Iris Murdoch a lot for her metaphors. For her metaphors? Well, uh, Viv, who's it going to be? Iris Murdoch. Very good. A point heavy start. Iris Murdoch, uh, as we all know, author of The Sea, The Sea, The Bell, and uh, I think I've got this right, The Hairy Biker's Cookbook. <laughs> We turn to a man who satisfies one of the two criteria to qualify as a hairy biker, uh, Nick Helm. Um, (laughs) Nick, we asked your mother, Jean, who is Nick's all-time hero? What do you think she suggested? Well, I grew up really loving Bruce Campbell, who starred in the Evil Dead films. And I buy... This is sad. um, (laughs) It's not sad. Be proud of yourself. Um, (laughs) I buy plastic figurines of him. It's fine, right? (laughs) So it could be him, but I don't think it is, because I think it's probably Alice Cooper, because um, I'm a massive Alice Cooper fan. She said Alice Cooper. If, if not, then she's not my mum. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I don't know what she's been paying attention to the last 32 years. It's Alice Cooper. Jean, I pity you. Who is... Who's Nick's hero? Say Batman. <laughs> Mum! <laughs> yeah, and Batman. That was the third one. It was. I've got figurines of him as well. <laughs> Batman, Alice Cooper, and Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Oh. No points. Uh, oh, dear. Do you feel let down? Yeah. I mean, it's the first time Batman's let me down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're blaming him and not, not your mother. Um, <laughs> Uh, back over now to Scotland's sixth most eligible man, brackets 2003. Uh, <laughs> it was a very good year. <laughs> uh, Dougie Anderson, uh, we asked Nigel, in a film based on the story of his life, who would play Dougie? Who do you think he went for? Wow. I've been likened to a few people uh, over the years. Uh, at 18, someone said I reminded them of Richard Beckinsale. I had uh, Ray Davis for a while. I had uh, Johnny Lee Miller. I was quite pleased with that one. 
had Lenny Henry a bit confused with that one. <laughs> But I think the person who I've been likened to most and who I think I'd be quite happy to play me would be the star and indeed hero of Gregory's Girl, John Gordon Sinclair. <laughs> right, let's check it with Nigel. John Gordon Sinclair. <laughs> I can't tell you how surprising this is because what you don't know about Nigel is that he's an idiot and <laughs> <laughs> he remains to this day the only person I know who literally set fire to his trousers <laughs> whilst wearing them. Uh, deliberately? He had a loose thread and he thought he'd burn it off with a lighter. <laughs> it kept on burning people and it would have kept on burning had I not stepped in. Oh, Dougie, correct. Two points there for John Gordon Sinclair. It's a tantalising prospect, isn't it? Of course, one of the greatest living Scotsmen uh, playing another. Uh, certainly, certainly promises to be an exciting new chapter in the history of cinema, if funding and rights can be secured. Um, <laughs> seriously, John, if you're listening, this does not constitute a firm offer of work. Please refrain... <laughs> please refrain from unnecessary travel. Um, Izzy, you're next. Uh, we put this, uh, your mum, Viv. What did you do that most embarrassed Izzy as a child? Oh, my God, I don't know where to start. <laughs> when I was about ten, she became an inventor, and she sat me and my sister down and said, I'm going to invent something, and you're not allowed to tell anyone in the playground about this invention because they'll steal it, and I'm going to make loads of money. And we were like, as if we're going to tell anyone. Um, because the invention was a bean bag that was a rectangular shape with the keys of a piano painted onto it so that people who didn't have a piano could feel like they were playing the piano. <laughs> and so that they could practice their scales. But the point of a piano is that it makes noise. <laughs> Yet all that happened with the bean bag was just <laughs> as you press down on the keys. I remember um, in Christmas 1989 how sad I was when my parents bought me a piano bag, TM. <laughs> Shipped all the way down from Matlock. <laughs> <laughs> Special <laughs> delivery. Yeah, I, I think it probably was um, being an inventor or possibly being a bell ringer, which was very, very uncool, but I, I think the inventor beat it. OK, Aviv, what was it? I think washing underwear when friends came to the house. <laughs> I have obliterated that from my memory. <laughs> so you have no recollection of the fact that you're... Um... No, I mean, I wonder if she means hanging it out in front of my friends. Would she do it as a sort of... You know, when some people go, someone comes to the door and they go, oh, I'll, I'll just put the kettle on. <laughs> yeah. Would your mother go, oh, I'll just, I'll just put some pants on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very possibly. Uh, I'm afraid no, no points, but uh, we're all learning. We're all learning a lot. Um, on again to Nick. We asked your mother, if Nick could have a superpower, what would it be? I don't know, Gene. Um, <laughs> flying. I mean, Batman can't fly, so, you know, he's just dead hard, isn't he? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a superpower, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> If, yeah. if she's been listening. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say probably uh, flying. Oh, oh, but, you know, as a substitute, <laughs> I just want to put it out there, just invisibility, but that's not really a superpower, that's, uh, that's more of an affliction, isn't it? Um, <laughs> flying, flying. Let's go with flying. <laughs> OK, uh, via invisibility, flying. Jean, where's your money going? I think he'd like to go faster. <laughs> I haven't got a problem with that, Mum. <laughs> he likes to do lots of things, but I think he could fit more in if he could go faster. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything, Gene! <laughs> I was trying to meet you halfway with flying! He's not going faster! <laughs> it's the new breed of superhero. What's he called? Mr. Pragmatic. <laughs> he can get slightly more done in a day. <laughs> having four points! <laughs> we laugh, but it is. 
goodness me, we've reached the end of the first round. So it's time to look at the scores, which, as always on It's Not What You Know, have been independently verified by some people that we know. In this case, the RNLI. Met up with them in early this week. Great bunch of lads. They really did push the boat out. Uh, <laughs> In fact, allowed me to ride in it all the way back to the shore whilst explaining to me very nicely that simply wearing armbands did not make me a seaworthy vessel. <laughs> and we can see that, oh, surprisingly, in third place is Nick, in second place <laughs> is Izzy, and only just out in front, it's Dougie. Yeah. Well, we've already found out how well the nominees know the panellists. Now we're going to see how well the panellists know their nominees. This time out, we start the questions with Izzy Sati. Izzy, we asked your mother, Viv, if forced to participate in the 2016 Olympics, what sport would you choose? What do you think she said? Bell ringing, if that could be a sport. Obviously, it can't. Um, so I think she might say something sort of generic that everyone can do, like gymnastics or like long jump. It's just jumping a long way. <laughs> okay, gymnastics or uh, long term. Just, you know, every man's sports. Okay, um, <laughs> let's see what Viv says. Women's wrestling. Women's wrestling has recently been dropped um, <laughs> by the IOC, I'm afraid, Viv. Oh, right, okay. Darts. Um, <laughs> darts, darts is not an Olympic sport, Viv. No curse, no good, is it? No. Um, chess? Is oh, sport, Viv! <laughs> Bridge? Don't take the mic. Rounders, is it? No, no, no! Okay. Um, I'd have to swim. Swimming! I love the fact that she didn't say swimming, she said, I'd have to swim. <laughs> she didn't say where to. <laughs> yeah, what, what's that event where they have to swim? <laughs> Uh, swimming. Yeah, we got there in the end. Um, I did have my doubts at one point, uh, like, like talking to an elderly relative about what they want for lunch and being repeatedly asked, what's happened to the prettier nurse? Um, no, no points. Time now to go to Nick Helm. Nick. <laughs> we asked your mother, Jean, Jean, who is your favourite recording artist? When she, she uh, when we were growing up, uh, she'd be like uh, Tina Turner, and we went to uh, see Tina Turner. I was too old, really, probably, to be going with my mum to see Tina Turner. <laughs> but I went to see her Wildest Dreams tour, and there's this big golden eye at the back of the stage, and the iris opened, and Tina Turner came out of this big golden eye. <laughs> Uh, singing uh, uh, Nutbush City Limits. Um, <laughs> it was weird, if anything. Um, no, she's singing Goldeneye. Um, so she really liked Tina Turner, but she hasn't done anything in a while. Um, she likes Coldplay, which, you know, it's, it makes Christmas hard. Um, <laughs> and she likes Bruce Springsteen. I mean, this is just me listing things now, isn't it? <laughs> Well, you... I just really want to be right, you know? Um, Why not narrow it down to one? <laughs> <laughs> but... No, I, I'm going to go with Coldplay, but I mean, I hope it's Tina Turner. <laughs> right, uh, gamesmanship. Let's find out. Jean? I'd have to say Coldplay, probably. <laughs> Oh, one of the great moments in British quizzing. Uh... <laughs> oh, fantastic. How does that feel? Amazing. <laughs> Nick Helm has two points. The final question in this round goes to Dougie Anderson. We asked Nigel, Nigel, if you could do any job, what would it be? <sighs> he doesn't like the job he's in at the moment. Uh... <laughs> No, he's very vocal about it. <laughs> Not obviously at his place of work, where I, where I hear they love a bit of Radio 4 comedy. <laughs> um, I, well, his main passion, uh, like me, is music. He can't play anything for Toffee, but he would have loved to have toured the world. I, I'd say a, a, a musician. Musician, Nigel Reveal all? Probably Spurs manager, I think. <laughs> Yeah, Spurs manager Nigel dreams of working in an equestrian tech shop. Um, 
where he would specialise in the sale and aftercare of these sharp spiked wheels, customarily attached to the boots of riders who wish to urge their horses onto ever greater feats. Um, <laughs> I guess, of course, it's something to do with football. Can't say I've Googled it myself, but um, feel free to do so at your leisure. Uh, no points. Well, it's the end of round two, and it's time to look at the scores, which, as ever on It's Not What You Know, have been independently verified by some people that we know. In this case, the British Institute of Innkeepers. Met up with them early this week, and they are a great bunch of lads. Uh, although they had quite a wretched evening, partly my fault. I took them to a juice bar and then spent the entire time pointing out to them how cheaply alcohol is available in supermarkets. Um, <laughs> still, I enjoy myself. And we can see that uh, in third place is Izzy, uh, and joint first place, Nick and Dougie. <laughs> On with round three. The rules for this round are enormously complicated. I'll give you the answer to a question. What you have to do is tell me which of the nominees gave that answer. Nick Helm's mother, Jean, Izzy Sutty's mum, Viv, or Dougie Anderson's friend, Nigel. Which of our three nominees said that their favourite drink is rough cider? Dougie. I don't think it's Nigel, because he's not that picky. He'd just say cider. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go for Viv. OK, Viv? My favourite drink is rough cider. <laughs> oh yeah, when, uh, when do you like that, Viv? Well, the pub in Belper, after bell ringing, is taken to have guest ciders in and they taste disgusting, but you kind of crave them. <laughs> <laughs> Two points, uh, yes. Uh, there we go, a life of rough cider and bell ringing. Uh, <laughs> I quite often forget what a strong foothold the Amish have in Derbyshire. Uh, <laughs> and now, which of the nominees said that their first pet was a cat called Marmalade? Izzy. I know it's not my mum, because the only pet we had when we were little was a goldfish called Bobo, which I won from the fair. And she went outside to change its water and laid Bobo out on the rockery to dry. <laughs> Sounds like someone who's high on a bit of rough cider. <laughs> <laughs> so, would it be Nigel or would it be Jean? I'm going to say Nigel. OK, uh, Nigel? A dog called Sherry. <sighs> OK, ooh, Dougie's buzzed in. Yeah, I think it's Jean. <laughs> OK, uh, Jean? Yeah, I did have a cat called Marmalade. Very good. <laughs> but it, uh, it didn't last very long. Because you said its favourite era was Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Next, which of our three nominees, Jean, Nigel or Viv, said that their favourite song is Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? Is he? I think it's Nigel. I would imagine that in Woking, there's nothing better than sitting around singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. No, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's see who went for Twinkle, Twinkle. Well, probably at the moment, it's Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, how I wonder what you are. I think the clue's in the previous line. It's a star. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> on and on this country goes, wondering where it's going wrong. <laughs> anyway, not my place to make a fuss. Um, well, it's the end of that round. We can see that in third place is Izzy, in second place is Nick, and out in front it's Dougie. <laughs> this round is called The Big One. In this round, a round in which I might add there are a whopping four points at stake, each panellist will have to summon up everything they know about their nominee and answer the following all-important question. What is your nominee's favourite pizza topping? <laughs> this round, of course, takes inspiration from the classic 1950s panel game, Animal Vegetable Pizza, <laughs> where uh, each week Arthur Askey would invite four ration book-clutching members of the post-war British public to hazard a guess as to what a pizza might be. Um, <laughs> Dougie Anderson, you're first to take the pizza challenge. What do you think Nigel likes on his pizza? I think he'd enjoy a pepperoni, but I just think it's a little bit too middle of the road. So I'll go for, I'll go for spicy chicken and peppers. Let's see. Nigel, what do you like on your pizza? 
Ham and pineapple, controversially. Oh, ham and pineapple. Well, that tells you everything you need to know about Nigel. Um, <laughs> provided that what you needed to know about Nigel is, is, is what he just said. Um, <laughs> we turn now to Izzy Sutty. Uh, how would your mother choose to garnish a pizza? We, we presume with foodstuffs, you may know better. <laughs> Um, well, she's quite a health freak, so I think she'd probably lose the cheese um, and just have tomato, tuna, maybe a bit of sweet corn, and I guess glazed with rough cider. <laughs> well, it sounds like it would stay in your system for a reasonable amount of time. Um, is it right, Viv? I don't know the name of it, but as long as it's got salami sausage in it. Salami, sausage. Oh. I don't know the name of it. It's a pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> no points. Um, finally, Nick Helm. Nick, can you perform under this intense pizza-related pressure? <laughs> what do you think your mum's going to go for? Uh, she doesn't eat pizza, because it's got <laughs> yeast in it. But in the, her old pizza-eating days, I think that she probably ate something like Four Seasons. Uh, is it Four Seasons? What's uh, on a Four Seasons? We can crowdsource this. What's on a Four Seasons? And don't you have, like, a tunery one in one bit with, like, anchovies on it? And then you have, like, a pepperoni. Then you have a cheese. And then you have something that's got something spinachy on it. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, that's it. And she loves mushrooms. <laughs> right, uh, let's see if you're right. Jean? I like... Anchovies, tuna, sweet corn, mushrooms. There we are. You've done it. You've done it. I used to go for pepperoni, but I've gone off that now. <laughs> it's a wonderful story. <laughs> So, it's the end of the show. And as ever on It's Not What You Know, the points have been verified by some people that we know, the Independent Regulator and Competition Authority for the UK Communications Industries, Ofcom. Um, met up with them earlier this week. Have to say, great bunch of lads. Um, <laughs> the chat was pretty family-friendly to begin with, but after nine o'clock, my goodness, they became filthy. Um, <laughs> and the final scores show that in third place is Izzy, but in joint first place, Dougie and Nick. Thank you to our panellists, Nick Helm and his mother Jean, Izzy Sati and her mother Viv, and Dougie Anderson and his friend Nigel. Thank you to you for listening. I guess after all that, it just goes to show, it's not what you know. Good night. <laughs> it's Not What You Know was hosted by me, Miles Jupp. The script was written by myself and James Keppel. The producer was Sam Michel.